Okay, hi, uh, good morning. Um, so this is the topic of the talk, and here is our team at IBM Research, and our team actually focus on bridging the, the gap between language models and the specific needs of customers. Um, actually, this gap is, uh, is um, usually quite large, quite big, and we would like to bridge the, this gap and to enable customers to enjoy the wonderful things that can be done by language models. <clears throat> and we would like to do that with minimal effort from the customers. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so to motivate this work that I'm going to speak about, let me start with a true story. Uh, IBM lawyers approached us and they told us, well, we have the following problem. We have very, very long contracts and we have hundreds of them and we would like to review these contracts in order to find potential risks within the contracts. And it would be extremely helpful for us if you could build classifiers for us that will automatically detect clauses within the contracts that are associated with topics of interest. And when, I, when they say topics of interest, they mean topics that are known to be associated with risks, for example, privacy, warranties, and others. So the problem that they described is actually falls under the large umbrella of topical tax classification problems. And in fact, IBM lawyers are not the only ones who are interested in these tasks. Many of the clients have textual data that they would like to classify into topics. And this motivated us to look deeper into this problem because we wanted to come up with solutions that will satisfy our customers and there are a wide range of applications for topical tax classification in various domains and we wanted to see how we can do best for, uh, for this uh, problem. <clears throat> and again, our goal is to provide solutions that minimize the effort of the user. And when we speak about efforts in the context of classification, a main effort is involved in annotation. If the user, if the client needs to provide label data for the task of interest, the task that he is interested in, then this is a very time consuming and expensive process, the annotation. So we wanted to minimize the amount of label data that the client needs to supply. And this motivated us to look at the topic of zero-shot classification. In zero-shot classification, the task is to classify data into classes that the model were not exposed to during fine-tuning, during training. So this means that without any label data provided by the user, this classifier needs to cope with the task defined by the user. Um, so if we have a good zero-shot topical text classification solution, this of course can uh, dramatically reduce the effort that needs to be invested by the client. And with the large advances in large language models, and then they revolutionize the whole NLP um, manifold and including the zero-shot text classification capabilities. So now these capabilities are much better than they were before. But when we wanted to understand which zero-shot model to choose for our, the solution that we built for our clients, this was not very clear to us. We looked at the literature and we wanted to find whether there is a comparative study of the different available models in the context of topical tax classification, and we didn't find a, a, a comprehensive, systematic study of the performance of the different approaches. So this was exactly the um, main objective of the current work, to perform a systematic study, study of the different approaches to compare between them. And for this purpose, we created a very large, relatively very large um, benchmark of topical text classification data sets. It, it is composed of 23 data sets for topical text classification. And we wanted to use this benchmark in order to evaluate the different approaches for topical text classification and to understand which model is, fits best the needs of our clients. And we also suggested a new approach for further improving the current performance of zero-shot text classification models. 
what are the different approaches for zero-shot text classification? So what all the approaches have in common is that they utilize the semantic meaning of the class name. And another thing that they have in common is that they suggest to map different tasks onto the same meta problem and train the model to solve this meta problem and because the mapping exists, so different tasks can be solved by the same problem because they can be mapped onto this meta problem. And what distinguish one approach from another is the meta problem that they suggest to solve. So one approach suggests to map different tasks onto the NLI problem. The NLI problem, you need to classify two texts, a premise and a hypothesis, into whether the premise entails the hypothesis or not entails the hypothesis. So if you have a text classification problem, you just put the text to be classified as the premise, and uh, the hypothesis is this text is about sports. So if the text is about sports, then they entail each other. And if they are not, the text is not about sports, then the premise do not uh, uh, entail the hypothesis. The same can be done for question answering. Different tasks can be described as a question answering uh, problem. Is this text about sport? Yes or no? So a model that was trained for the question answering problem can perform text classification topical text classification, and instruction tuning. All of us are familiar with these models that describe the task as an instruction. Here you see how to do that for topical text classification. And then a model that was trained to follow instructions can classify text into topics. But what we see when we look at all these um, approaches that none of them was designed specifically to solve topical text classification. They were designed to solve a wider range of tasks, which is great. It's, 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 it's great that uh, one model can do many tasks, but we asked ourselves, we are interested specifically in topical text classification. Can these approaches be improved by focusing them on this specific task? And this is our approach. What we suggest to do is to leverage this benchmark that I mentioned earlier, the one that collected, uh, that is composed of a collection of data sets on topical text certification. Perhaps these data sets can also be uh, leveraged in order to fine tune existing solutions, zero sort solution for topical text classification and focusing them on the, the problem of topical text classification. What is this benchmark composed of? So here you see the 23 uh, data sets, and uh, we took them from the publicly available data set from Agimfanes, from Cargill, and for related papers. And the nice thing here is that not all these data sets were originally labeled for the problem of topical text classification. We, find that we found out that even data sets that were originally targeted at different uh, problems can be converted onto um, to data sets that are targeted at topical text classification, and that's what we did. We, talk, we took only dat also data sets for intent detection, argument quality, stand detection, et cetera, and we converted them to topical text classification, and they are included here in this uh, collection. And this includes both multi-class and multi-label data sets. Now to the results. So we started with comparing between the off-the-shelf models, and here you see representatives for each of the approaches that we mentioned before. Um, there are th three col four columns here, three columns, uh, MC, MC star and MC star star. One challenge that we had is that part of the models that appear here were already fine-tuned using data sets that are actually included in TC23. And if we want to evaluate that there is zero shot performance, we cannot, uh, we cannot evaluate them on the data sets that were, they were already exposed to during fine tuning. So we needed to remove from the benchmark those data sets that were included in the fine tuning of the off the shelf models. So we have three columns. MC is the aver macro average F1 over all the data sets. MC start is the same, but removing all the data sets that participants participated in the QA training. And MC star star is all the, those that participate in the FLAN training. FLAN is an instruction tuning model. 
And we see that, uh, unsurprisingly, the larger the model, the better the results. Now, what about our approach? So in order to simulate zero-shot scenario in the models that were trained using our approach, we needed to be a bit careful because if you, we use the TCC23 for fine-tuning, we can't evaluate data sets that participant participated in the training and evaluate them uh, in the evaluation because then it's not zero-shot anymore. So we split this, this benchmark into three folds. Two folds took part in the training and the left out fold took, up in, uh, took part in the evaluation and we did that three times. So each time one fold was left out and the two others uh, were used for fine tuning. And we see that this indeed helped a lot in, and improved a lot the zero shot performance. Uh, I just marked the um, the model and its counterpart uh, so that it will be easy to see. And we see that even for the FLAN extra extra large model, a model, a very strong model of 11 billions of parameters that was fine tuned using thousands of tasks, including topical tech classification tasks, still the, the specification uh, the, or this, um, um, turning this model into a special models and focusing it on the task of topical text classification helped it to improve uh, significantly compared to the non-specialized model. So to summarize, um, we did this uh, comprehensive evaluation of existing zero-shot models. Uh, we present a new benchmark that we hope the community will utilize it for um, evaluating topical text classification method. And we suggested a new approach for improving zero-shot performance of models by focusing them on topical text classification. And we, so we show that they indeed perform better regarding future directions. So there are many, I just mentioned in here one of them. We said that our objective is to minimize the labeling effort of the user. And zero-shot is one way, but usually the zero-shot performance is not good enough for practical you suggest, so we need to um, further employ other methods to uh, further reduce the uh, annotation effort, like active learning, like self-turning. So it will be interesting to study how these different methods um, um, perform on top of these strong, very strong zero-shot uh, models. That's it, thank you.